He's back for good. He <laughs> for good. Come I ain't on. going nowhere. He ain't going nowhere. All right. That's it. He said, "Don't get no more guest hosts. Right. <laughs> don't need no more guests." I turn on my social media. I've been off of. Like, nah, I appreciate everybody who has been helping me out and filling in. Uh, but yeah, man, it, it feels good to be back, bro. How yeah. you been doing, man? Man, I'm good, man. Yeah, that's good. good. It's crazy though because. You know, so much has transpired, you know, since the last time we talked, yeah. obviously, because, you know, we came back in March. We're like, yeah, we back. We back, <laughs> y'all. We back. And then we dipped again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't see those videos until recently. I just right. started liking them on uh, Instagram just recently and started sharing them. But those yeah. videos was put out a minute ago. That was a minute ago, bro. It's all right. So what has been going on since then? I mean, a lot has transpired. I mean, we, um, of course, growing in ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, growing and doing my little training thing, but more importantly, um, growing as a man of God, as a Christian, Mm -hmm. I think it's been my journey because a lot of times when you grow up, um, in in an environment of church, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Growing up in church, you feel like, um, you know, you know how you're going to go, you know, the way you're going to go. And when things don't happen the way you expect it to happen. So for example, you know, growing up in the church, I had it planned out that I was going to uh, be this big time football player, come mm-hmm. back, give to my church, you right. know, the millions, but then go on about do my business. I had no idea, mm-hmm. even though people was telling me I was going to preach the word. I said, it's not going to happen because the way my life was set up, to take mm-hmm. three business days. To tra- <laughs> <laughs> <That's too weird. laughs> nah, but anyway, um, I'm grateful to be where I'm at. Um, as a man of God. And what I mean is I feel more comfortable and confident in my skin. Yeah. Um, my walk is not based off of the things that are around me. It's my own personal walk yeah. um, and understanding, being transparent with myself, dealing with some traumas, yeah. you know, that I haven't dealt with, yeah. you know, that I've overlooked yeah. um, things that I have been ignored over my life. And I think that is very important um, that we help the body of Christ yeah. find it. It's balance yeah. um, because I believe the balance of being a Christian is not necessarily there yeah. <clears throat> because I think our our perspective have been skewed by things have to be a shout or a dance. Mm-hmm. And I think what else has happened is, and my pastor said this, he said, you know, we got the spiritual side down packed. Yeah. But when it comes to the natural things or when it comes to going after uh, life, we we don't do good yeah. as a people. And, and I'm going to be honest, as as black folk, you know, yeah. we don't we, we don't really um, expand ourselves in different areas of our lives it's because I feel like we're so boxed in. And then the moment we step out of the box, uh, we don't have enough balance to. Um, where we're not being pulled by the world. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. we'll get there, we'll yeah. become successful, mm-hmm. and now we're hearing a bunch of people, um, again, no dis- I say this respectfully, we'll hear a bunch of people who are still in the church, and which is fine, mm-hmm. but broke. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. Uh, You're uh, right. Or they don't really, they're not really doing nothing. They're doing the same old things. They're not yeah. evolving. Yeah. Um, so I believe my walk and the way God has me going um, through the experiences of life yeah. is helping me to become more of a leader by example. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to just, um, and I was talking to a friend of mine, I was saying, I don't just want to have the gifts mm-hmm. and not have the fruit. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I want to be able to, you know, utilize my gifts, my skills and the things that God has given me mm-hmm. um, to, you know, produce the fruit and for me, you know, the fruit is other people, my family um, growing, my um, friends around me. Every every person that I come in contact with yeah. is impacted, yeah. not because I'm telling them, but because they're watching. Right. You feel what I'm saying? I'm so really. that's where I'm at with it, bro. Man, I love it. I love it. It's funny because as you were talking, I just, I know this is going to be very bold. It's going to mm-hmm. be like, yo, like, yo, he's calling people this, but... Mm-hmm. What you were describing is like, you know, you know, have you heard this? You play football, you play sports, you're mm-hmm. athletic. 
So, like, my coach used to say, what's the definition of an idiot? Mm-hmm. A person that's doing the same thing over and over again, expecting mm-hmm. the same results. Mm-hmm. Like, that's insanity, mm-hmm. but it's also an idiot, too. Right, right. So, it's like, it's you're dealing with people that are spiritually insane mm-hmm. or spiritual idiots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's kind of a bold take, mm-hmm. but it's true because, yes, you know, when we're dealing with different ones that are like that, you know, they bring us down. Mm-hmm. They bring us Thank you. They bring us down, but they also bring us to the place where, you know, we are not able to grow spiritually. Mm-hmm. We're not able to grow in what God has for us mm-hmm. because we're too busy trying to do the same things that we think is working. Right. And it's not. Right. And so right. I love that uh, men- mentality, bro. I'm, I'm glad that you're back. Bro, yes, sir. Yes, I'm sir. glad to have you back. So today we have a new topic. You know, I know it's like we have all these different topics all over the place. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, TJ, how many topics you got? I got a million topics. Uh-huh. Right? I got a million topics. It's, it's just the mind of a creative. You have so many things and ideas That's that it. you want to do. That's it. And bro. it's like, bro, we don't got to apologize. We ain't got to. Because we got to tackle it. Well, we do. We, we the do. The body of Christ is suffering. I think there are so many uh, things that are happening within the body mm-hmm. as far as people not knowing their function mm-hmm. or knowing their uh <laughs> I don't know why they laughing but <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> oh, they 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 laugh. what <laughs> right <say>? right anyway <laughs> there is a lot of things that are happening within the body um that um there are injuries within the body if you will yeah. that is it needs to be addressed so these topics I believe will help so many different people understand what it what it takes to walk as a Christian, as a believer Mm -hmm. in different things of that nature. So I ain't apologizing, you know, we're going to do what we do. We unapologetically speaking. Yes, sir. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So you brought up this topic, you know, um, we hit, well, we hit each other up randomly uh, (laughs) earlier this week, um, just trying to figure out where we're going to go with this and what we're going to do. Um, and you brought up this topic based Mm -hmm. off a conversation that you had. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that it's so important to have this conversation because as you were talking to me about it, you know, I was thinking to myself, it's like, what, how can I, how can I address this? But then it was like the Lord started dealing with me and started showing me so many different things Mm -hmm. that to address or to yeah address this issue, address this topic. So our topic today is going to be the drought. Mm. And so I want you to like really expound on that because, you know, this is something that, you know, came up with a conversation that you've had recently. Yeah. So, I mean, um, pretty much, and we'll get into detail. Um, I said that there is a drought in the body of Christ. There is a lack of, Jesus says he is the living bread. He's the living water. And I think a lot of uh, what's happening from my observation is that a lot of people are not being fed Mm. and not being fed properly. Mm -hmm. Um, The body, in order for the body to work properly, um, number one, it has it, it has certain things that it has to digest. I'm just talking from the physics side or the anatomy side of it. Right. There are certain things you got to feed it. Uh-huh. There are certain things you got to do as far as exercise. Um, there is so much that has to take place. And when you're not doing things properly, uh, what ends up happening is there becomes that, that body becomes, begins to starve. Uh-huh. And what I believe is happening is the body of Christ is starving because there are more people promoting self than they are promoting Jesus. Um, And I'm not saying that that is everybody, but if you're getting, um, we had convocation not too long ago. Our church had convocation and Prophet Mm -hmm. Hall, he made a powerful statement that will stick with me. What he said was, he said, anytime a preacher or a person that is talking amongst a congregation if the people in the congregation or the people that are listening, if in turn they cannot forget about what they're going through mm-hmm. and start focusing on what's to co- or what's better or what's to come, then you're not making an impact. Yeah. You're not feeding them what they need. And because a lot of times I think what's happening is um, people have gotten so used to church. Yeah that they don't know, like I was telling you off off the air, they don't know how to be a Christian yeah. outside of the four walls because when you come, let's think about it, when mm-hmm. you come into church, there's a certain reverence you have, 
there's a certain way you kind of you don't do it on purpose but you kind of switch up yeah you know what i mean yeah. you're not really being yourself and what happens is how can you get true deliverance mm-hmm. if you're not coming as you are Ooh, that's good that's good how can you get true healing if you're not coming in as you are and the only reason why you're coming in that way because in your mind you're dealing with the image or what people may think of you yeah. when the, the, the church is supposed to be the hospital. Mm-hmm. But it also goes to tell me that what you're, what, what's being said or what's being fed to you is not allowing you to operate in self. Yeah. What I mean by that is to be comfortable enough to say, you know what, man, I'm dealing with smoking or yeah. I'm dealing with drinking. Yeah. I'm dealing with whatever. I'm dealing with lust. Mm-hmm. And people are so, I believe, in my heart of hearts, people are afraid to be that honest and that bold because of the image that has been brought up. So I believe that there has been a drought in the body of Christ where, because Jesus would go, I need you to think about it. Jesus would go around wherever. Yeah. It didn't matter where it was, and it, it didn't matter the, the people that was around him. Mm-hmm. He was so God, yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. He was so God and within himself Mm -hmm. that he changed every atmosphere that he he was literally the bread of life. Yeah. He was he was living water. And every time people came around him, you know, they felt full. They felt and it was um, in in the word of God when they followed him for three days without even eating. Yeah. And then he fed he fed them with the two fish and the five five loaves. loaves. You feel what I'm saying? Uh But three days. Mm They're listening to what he's saying, yeah, because there is no drought in what he's saying. Right. There is no, there is all word that is building these people up. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So right. um, that's I, and I came up with this because I was actually, you know, and I'm not going to say no names. I had a, a great conversation with some great people. Right. I'm gonna just say it like <clears throat> that, and they were telling me some stories of some individuals you know, um, in the gospel industry, mm-hmm. if you will. And some of the things I was hearing, even though it was sad to hear, um, I can't look at it as if, you know, that they're the problem. Yeah. To me, what's happening is someone needs to reach them and they're not being reached properly. Mm. Be- and, and the problem with that is because people are so gifted, mm-hmm. so anointed in yeah. the church, yeah. right? They're so gifted and anointed in the church that people will turn a blind eye to the to a real issue or they can't reach it or they're too afraid. Yeah. And we have the responsibility, just like John the Baptist, we have a responsibility to cry out. Yeah. We have a responsibility to give them that word. And, you know, and if we're not doing it, then who is going to do it? Yeah. So that's why I came up with that topic, bro. So, you know, that's my take on it. What is your take on, you know, the drought and the things that are happening now? Yeah, bro? I mean, it's, it's a good take because I think that when we look at how in the current state of the church, you know, as you were speaking about how different ones coming in and they're thinking about the image, I think because of the fact that the church has placed such an emphasis on having a perfected image, when you come into the church, you you see all these people dressed up and things like that. And I'm not knocking on people that's dressing up and going to church. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is like, you know, we have this preconceived notion, right. especially to unbelievers and to people that are unchurched that come into a church setting and they see all the fancy things that's going on. Mm-hmm. And, it can, and it can kind of put them in a position of, oh, well, I got to be perfect in order mm-hmm. to be, you know, a Christian. I have to become this person to be a Christian. And the truth is, you don't have to be that person to be, be a Christian. Right, right. You don't right. have to be perfect right, right off the bat. Right. God wants you just as you are, just right. as nasty and messed up as you are, because he's the one that can clean you up on the inside Absolutely. and can fix you and then present you faultless, as the scripture come says, on, come on. before his father and the very presence of his throne. So yes. it's like we have to understand that, you know, as believers, as mature believers, that we can't put so much emphasis on the perfected image, mm-hmm. but we have to do what we can to, to, to put ourselves on a better platform or a better setting mm-hmm. so that people can receive God in a much easier and lighter way. And when I say that, I'm talking about, you know, we can't always pre- present perfection right. as right. the standard. Right. 
Christ wants us to, yes, live in the image, or God wants us to live in the image of Christ. Yes. Right. But it's our desire, or it's, it's Christ's desire for us to just live, to mm-hmm. just come to him. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw. Come on. And so when he says, I'm lifted up, that means that he don't care who you are, what you are. Mm-hmm. You're being drawn to the image of Christ. Come you're on. being drawn to who Christ is. And as we grow as Christians, as we grow as believers, as we grow as men and women of God, we're growing more into the image of God. Mm-hmm. But that comes with our imperfections. Mm-hmm. That comes with us being honest about what's going on in our lives and really tackling and addressing what's, ha- what's happening Come in our on. I had a friend of mine uh, recently share with me something that they were struggling with, something that they were dealing with. Um, and I told him, I was like, bro, just be honest and own it. That's it. If you own it, That's you can it. you can now begin the process of walking away from it. That's it. You can now begin the process of deliverance. But if you're only trying to hide it and you're only trying to, you know, maintain this image of perfection, it's just killing you on the inside. Bro. And now it's like what you said, your spiritual man is in a drought, mm-hmm. but your flesh is being fed. Mm. And that's not what we want. Mm-hmm. I would rather my flesh man mm-hmm. be in a drought mm-hmm. and my spiritual man continually be fed mm-hmm. because I know that I am aiming towards the perfected image of Christ. Yes. Right. But I'm also aiming towards, um, towards holiness, right. towards righteousness, right. towards really being delivered. Right. And as you said earlier, it's all about if you want it right. or not. Correct. You know, sometimes you got to get so fed up with your sin that you want to be made See. whole. You got to be fed up with your sin that you want God to do something. You right. got to be fed up with who you are so that you can have change in your life. Right. If you're not fed up, you're always going to be, like we said earlier, a spiritual insane person. Yeah. You're going to be a spiritual idiot. Come You're on. just doing the same thing over and over and over and over, expecting the same result. Right. But God wants more from you. He right. desires more from you. Right. What he wants from you is not for you to be perfect. Right. It's just to live holy. Right, right, right. <laughs> be a Christian. Right. And if you're not saved, get saved. Right. You right. know? Find Jesus, you know? Yeah, absolutely. In the, part, in the pardon of your sins. Yes, sir. And it's, I think... And it leads up so so people can so we can put scripture behind it. Yes. Um, when you look at the book of Romans, Paul, um, oh, he says, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, "Here we go." Uh, in Romans, the seventh chapter, I like how Paul broke something down, the sin nature down. Mm-hmm. Let me look at you. Let me. <laughs> <laughs> you look at oh, yeah, I got you. I like how. <laughs> Paul, he broke down the sin nature because he was being very honest. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'm going to read it. Um, I'm going to start at the 14th verse. I should read the Message Bible so everybody can understand. I probably end up doing that anyway. Mm -hmm. But he says, for we know that the law is spiritual. The law is the standard Mm -hmm. that God had to do in the Old Testament. So here we go. All right. So for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Um, David made the statement. He said, I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. So when we come into this world, there are already, we already are at the disadvantage Mm -hmm. because of the things that have been in our bloodline and the different things that has happened. We're already fighting generational things that we didn't ask for. Right. All right. So he says, I'm carnal for that, which I do, or the word do means to perform. It means to accomplish. It means to achieve. He says, I allow not. So Mm -hmm. he, in other words, he has this mindset where I want to do good. I want to, do uh, spiritually right. I want to make the right decisions. I I want to I want to choose righteousness. I want to choose holiness. But that is not always the case. Yeah. What ends up happening is he says, uh, "For what I would that I do not, but what I hate that I do." The things that I've learned to hate. So I wrote something down. Let me see if I can remember it off the cuff. I said we have been conditioned around things that we hate now, but was once a part of our habits Yeah, was once a part of our culture, Mm -hmm. how we grew up Mm -hmm. and the things that we now understand is wrong. Mm -hmm. We're trying to break free from, but the truth of the matter is we still like it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard one of the old mothers say, and I love it. She said, 
I didn't live in a, a, a world of miserable sin. Yeah. She said, I enjoyed my sin. And that was the realest thing I've heard. And I still hear to this day. This is what helps me in my walk, bro. Because I recognize that sometimes in my in moments, I had those moments where I'm just like, you know, bump it. However, here's the key and the kicker. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't even get to the rest of the text. But <laughs> break uh, it down. Break yeah, it down. It the key is, is not the error. Mm-hmm. It's it's the drive. Yeah. What are you driving towards? Mm. I think what's the drought also comes in, especially with people who have influence. Um, it also comes in is because just because it's a struggle, you you should know that it's not right, but you shouldn't accept the struggle. Mm. Yeah. You shouldn't accept the fact that it's wrong. Okay, I'm gonna keep doing it. I don't care what people say, and then get mad when people talk about it. It's wrong. Yeah. Wrong is wrong, regardless of who sees it and who doesn't see it. Right. The problem is what is your heart fixed on? Mm. Or where is your heart fixed on? Is it truly, are you truly wanting to be delivered? Mm -hmm. If you're not truly wanting to be delivered, be honest with God because God said, I would rather you be uh, um, um, cold or hot. Yeah. He hates lukewarm. Yeah. He wants a real person. That's why I I believe he continues to use people that don't qualify. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's not about the, the actions necessarily. It's about, is your heart truly submitted to me? Yeah. Because he'll take a true submitted heart, someone who doesn't belong per se, Mm -hmm. because Jesus could have came in with the jewels. He could have came in uh, uh, with the riches. But the Bible says he came in as a slave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A servant. A servant. Because he was so confident in who he was. Oh, that's good. And to the point where regardless of where he was, he was wealthy. Mm -hmm. Regardless of where he was, he was righteous. Mm -hmm. Regardless of where he was, he was holy. So... Regardless, um, I believe it's it's definitely we have to deal with the heart. Mm-hmm. We have to deal with our decision making and making sure that we're not being biased in our decision making yeah. because we're frustrated with the church. Yeah. Or we're frustrated with what people are saying and thinking. It truly boils down to uh, what do we want? Like yeah. you said earlier, I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good because I think that when we get to. You know, back to like what you were talking about, like the conversation that you had and where it all stemmed from about the drought. You know, I what the Lord led me to um, was really like first Samuel. Mm -hmm. Um, And for some reason, it was like I just could not shake like the story of David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why is that so significant? Okay. The reason why it was so significant is because when you look at when Saul was anointed king. Saul had the image Mm. of someone that was a king. Yes, sir. He had the looks. He had he had the height. He had the muscles. He had had everything. Muscles. He had everything. And Uh, so it's like when you look at David, and after Saul had sinned and did his thing, when Samuel was going, when God led Samuel to go um, and get the next king, he led him to Jesse's mm, sons. Yes, sir. So. It's customary because the first thing is the Jesse's sons. <laughs> all right. For those of y'all <laughs> real quick, if we sound like we're distracted a little bit, it's because we have a team now <laughs> <laughs> and they guiding us and helping us. So we thank God for growth. Amen. We thank Amen. God for where he's taking us. Um, I'll probably edit that out. Right. Maybe not. We'll see. But you Let know, it roll. it's Let been it a while, roll. you know, it's been a while yes, since we've done this. Yes, so we're getting there. But yeah. the point I'm trying to make. Let me stop. <laughs> But real talk. So Saul Samuel went to Jesse's sons. Mm-hmm. It's customary for Jesse to bring out his first son because Correct. why? We, you go to the oldest first. Right. You know, this is the one I want. You know, he's mm. going to be the king. Right, right. But as he was going through each and every son, mm. God kept tell, telling Samuel, no, that's not the one. That's mm. not the one. That's not the one. He said, you have one more son, do you? Jesse said, yeah, he's out in the field. He went and grabbed David. But what was David doing in mm. that moment? Right. He was working, working, working as what a shepherd. Come on. What was important That's about good. this entire story That's is good. when we look at the significance of David, mm. he was working as a shepherd, being in a season where he was really being prepared. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like David didn't even know that he was being prepared for what was about to happen. Mm-hmm. But David was a shepherd. He right. was working. He right. was 
So what? Slaying mm. dragons. Was <laughs> playing, not dragons. <laughs> bears and lions. Bears and lions. Uh, and you know, killing bears and killing lions and keeping the keeping the sheep, mm-hmm. keeping his daddy's sheep. And even when it gets mm, to the point good. to the story of getting to Goliath and go. how yeah, you see where I'm going. Right. I, see where <laughs> going. I see where you're going. Uh-huh. And even when we get to where he's getting to Goliath, what happens? All of all of his brothers are out there with King Saul, who has the image, who has looks the part and everything like that. David and, and his sons, they're out there. I mean, not David's son. Jesse's sons are out there. His brother, David's brothers. And they're all afraid mm-hmm. of this, what? What what did, they, what did they say his height was around that uh, time? He was like. It was 6'10". Like, he was no, 16? Six, I don't think he was. I think he was like 10 feet tall. 10 feet. Yeah. I said 6'10". 6'10". I meant 10'6". <laughs> <I'm like, six. laughs> we can fight a 6'10", dude. Like, <laughs> He's 16. Whatever. We can he save was him. big, okay? <laughs> That's all y'all need to know. All right. Mind your business. We having a conversation. The thing Go ahead, is, brother. What's funny is we got our Bibles right, right. here. So it's like, why don't you just look down and see what it says, CJ? Uh, he was he was but huge. Nah, uh, he was huge, right? Uh-huh. He was big. Yes, sir. But the thing is, it's like Saul has never faced a, a giant like this before. Mm. David's brothers had never faced a giant like this before. Mm-hmm. So what's the first thing David go David does when he's sent to go what take his brother some mm-hmm. lunch and whatnot? Mm-hmm. Serve him. What what is the first thing that he says? It's like, why are y'all scared of this this uncircumcised right. Philistine? All right, right. Like, right. and I, I love the fact that David came in mm-hmm. with straight disrespect. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like he didn't care. Yeah. And the reason why I love that is because like the whole time he was there, he was continually being disrespected. Mm-hmm. Why are you here? Right. Why are you asking all these questions? Questions. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Mm. All of these people that are asking him these questions were afraid. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, they were afraid because they were afraid of Goliath. Yes, they have sir. never faced this this giant before. Mm. And so David asked, so like, what is going to take to kill? Um, like, what is the reward for killing this mm-hmm. giant? And so Saul tells him what the reward is. David doesn't really care too much about the reward, mm-hmm. but David said, I can take one. Mm-hmm. And everybody's looking at this scrawny little kid. Mm-hmm. It's like, what do you mean you can take one? Right. But the thing is, David was in the fields as a shepherd. Come He's on. been preparing his entire time. Yes, sir. So now that Ooh, when he good. sees this particular moment, yes, sir. he's able to not only capitalize on it because he doesn't see it as a moment to capitalize. Right. He see it as an opportunity to utilize the confidence that is, with it, that is within him to now face this giant and to defeat this giant mm-hmm. because he's faced other giants Bigger, badder, stronger than this giant in the past. Yes, sir. So where am I getting with, with the with the drought? The thing is, when you were telling me about this story, and I started thinking about like the different uh, gifts mm. and the different people and the different ones that are in the church that have different significant gifts mm. in the body. Yes, sir. You know, we have musicians, we have singers, we have worship leaders, we have all these different people that bring. Extraordinary gifts. We have mm-hmm. preachers. We have production people. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the production. The production. <laughs> and we have you know sound people. Everybody who bring extraordinary gifts, but at the same time they can be somewhere, and their gift can be. <laughs> I hate to say this, but their gift can be overshadowed. Absolutely. Or their gift can be exemplified, or their gift can be put on display while their spirit man. It's lacking. It's drowning, man. It's drowning. They're in a drought. And the thing that stood out to me the most about this story with David and Goliath is that it didn't take a king. It didn't take a perfected image of a person to kill Goliath. It didn't take David's brothers. It didn't take all these different people who we think has to look to 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 minister or Mm -hmm. to do this or to do that. It took a shepherd boy Mm -hmm. (laughs) to handle the assignment because he was confident in his ability. He was he was confident that he could do it because he had already did it before. That's right. And so when we talk about all these different people with gifts and leaving them spiritually inept and different things like that, it's because of the fact that it's going to take the shepherds, man, it's going to take the shepherds, the men, the women of God, the pastors, the leaders to really pull these people in who have these spiritual gifts. You've, you've ministered to people before. Mm-hmm. You've ministered to so many different ones. So don't be so enamored by the gift. Mm-hmm. Don't be so um, amazed or in awe by the Talk gift that you turn a blind eye to their spiritual side. Correct. You've done this many times before. And I think back on like, even on me, like, I've learned so much over the past couple of years about what it takes to be a pastor. And I'm not even in a pastoral role. Mm-hmm. I'm in a leadership role at my church. And what I do is 
I utilized a lot of the training that I've 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 had over the years as an elder. It's not that many years, y'all. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I've utilized a lot of the training, a lot of the things that I've seen, a lot of the the ways that I've I've seen other pastors shepherd people, how mm-hmm. uh, people have shepherded me. And I've used that as, you know, not as tactics, but I've used that to help shepherd my team. Mm-hmm. I've been able to walk people through seasons when they've had cancer. I've, had, I've been able to walk through seasons with people who um, their children are having mental episodes. I've been able to walk with people who are going through different um uh, Trials and tribulations Come in on. their lives Like I've, I've been through situations Where certain people on the team Wanted to commit suicide Certain people on the team Were addicted to porn mm-hmm. Certain people on the team Were addicted to um, smoking And different mm-hmm. things like that I've never it, I'm not saying this to be like Oh TJ knows what he's doing I don't But I faced these giants mm-hmm. before yes, sir. So I am confident Not because of My ability to face these giants And I've done it before in the past But I'm confident because God has placed that on the inside of me Mm -hmm. To shepherd these people God has placed it on the inside of me To walk with these people God has placed it on the inside of me To not look at them just as their gift But to look at them as people Yes, sir. And that's the thing that we have to get to Yes they are a great singer Mm -hmm. Yes they are anointed Yes they have all of the gifts In the world But are they spiritually dead inside? Mm. I can, bro, when I say, I believe that so many people who have the influence is suffering so much in silence. Um, it's not even funny because it's like you said, man, whatever, for whatever reason, people get timid when they see a giant of yeah. influencer. Mm-hmm. But David who has been, like you stated, who, who's been in the field, he's been humbled, you know, at this point, I don't got nothing to lose mm-hmm. type of mentality. Not only that, the Bible says that David was a man at the God's own heart, which mm-hmm. is key. Yeah. You know, when you're a person at the God's own heart, let me encourage um, you guys and let me say this. Don't discount your experiences. That's good. Don't neglect everything that you have gone through. Don't think you have to know a certain level of Bible to be um, a light in someone's life. Because even me as a minister, um, a preacher, whatever, I had to learn, you know, that I don't have all the answers regardless of what I've learned in in the Bible. Sometimes it takes a person who is in the street to speak something that was from God that you would have never got because you can be so prideful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes because of that person's experience can change your trajectory on how you see certain things because of that person's experience. So I want to encourage each and every individual to never count yourself out. Your voice has to be heard. Um, You have to understand that the Bible says that death and life is in the power of your tongue. Um, your, your, your mouth is more powerful than you, you realize. Your experiences are not just for you. Your experiences is to help each and every individual you encounter, whether you know the person or not, whether they're, whether they're famous or not. That's one of my goals, bro. Mm-hmm. One of my goals is, and I, and I have it written down, you know, I want to meet different types of people, whether they're famous or not, whether... Yeah. Uh, they're a king or a queen or not. Uh, uh, or I just want to meet all types of people and I want to be an impact to their lives as well as they, they impact my life. Um, I have to be open to that because, again, that's what being a believer is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Look at how the word of God is set up. Look at how Jesus did his ministry. He went to yeah. he went and did ministry. Yeah. He didn't. He wasn't afraid to talk to anybody, whether it was a, a king, whether it mm-hmm. was someone who was poor. He was the same mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. everywhere he went. Yeah. This is why it comes back to us knowing who we are in him. Yeah. It comes back to us knowing, you know, our assignment within the body of Christ, and it's not subject to the four walls of the church. Yeah. Because. 
you got some gifted singers that should be doing evangelism mm. or have the opportunity to do evangelism, mm. but they got caught up in the world. Mm. They got caught up in the drinking and the smoking, but they're gifted enough to come into a church and rock, rock it out. Yeah. They're gifted enough to play and under the anointing, yeah. but yet and still their spirit is, is suffering. Yeah. And instead of them doing more, instead of using that influence, um, now they, they have conformed. Yeah. They have conformed yeah. to this world and we have to cry out. This yeah. is why we have one faith. This is why we do what we do is simply because people have to understand everyone needs a shepherd. Jesus said, I will leave the 99 to get the one just to get the one. Yeah. Do we have those type of believers? Yeah. You know, he said these signs will follow them that believe. Yeah. Not them that preach. Yeah. 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 <laughs> not them that have a title. Yeah. But do you believe? And that's that's what I, st I stand on who, who Christ is and yeah. what he's done for us. Yeah. He has done so much for us. Yeah. And the more you search him out, he'll change the inside. He'll change certain things. He'll feed those areas where mm -hmm. you feel empty. Yeah. He'll feed those areas where you feel the void because some of you who are watching this or listening to this now, you're trying to fill the void with a substance. You're mm -hmm. trying to fill a void That's with good. a person. That's good. You're trying to, you're when, it, when you're, you're trying to fill a void in a leader in the moment that that leader makes a mistake. Now you're crushed, but it's not, it's not by anybody but Jesus Christ. No one can stand in his way. No one can do what he do. Stop putting people on the pedestal. Yeah. Stop putting things on the pedestal. Yeah. Continue to evolve and get better. But understand that your drought ends not in people or in things, but your drought ends when you get in Christ. That's good, bro. That's so good. Yes, sir. It's so good. So as you can see, we're... we're Hitting this, you know, topic pretty hard and pretty heavy. Not to come down to anyone or, or anything like that, but sure. you know, we see the need. We see that there is a clear drought. Absolutely. Like there is a clear um, desire for people who are great influencers. Yes, sir. Um, people who are who have the spotlight on them at all time. They're crying out because they want somebody that mm -hmm. will just see them for who they are and not see them for their gift. Absolutely. I think that is something that, you know, we as believers and as church folk, mm -hmm. we have to stop putting them on a pedestal mm -hmm. as so much and stop calling them Christian celebrities and right, things like right, that. You right. know, they're just people. Right. Who has heart. Like right. and God has elevated them and has put them in, in a right. spotlight that is so great and so big. We can't be so quick, and this is another thing I was thinking about as you were talking. We can't we can't be so quick to send people to hell nah, man. when they make a mistake. <laughs> right. I know that's kind of like left, but that's true. No. Like we can't be so quick to send them to hell because they make a mistake and they're gifted. Because the minute that we send them to hell, we actually do. Because right. we say, Oh, you going to hell because you decided to sing R and B, leave the gospel <laughs> industry, sing R and B. Like, no. They did that to Molly. Yeah. Molly music. Yeah. A lot of people canceled out Molly music. Mm -hmm. When he he didn't necessarily switch over, but he broadened his audience. Yeah, and you know, but if you ever listen to Molly Music's and his lyrics and his song, They're he's all still Christ centered. Oh my God, yeah. he's still giving the message, and that's how we're supposed to be. Yeah. We have to be able to reach. Jesus will reach people in parables, yeah, with things that, it, that people can relate to at that time, mm -hmm. and, and we have to be relatable. We're not, you can't be so deep that. People can't come up to you and talk to you back without you saying hallelujah, right, praise the right, Lord. You right. know what I mean? I, because I remember, I remember working a job, bro, and it was a job in a factory. And this particular gentleman, we're still cool to this day. He would, um, he came around me. We would come, well, he would come around me and ask me questions. It was just random questions, and I was just real nice or whatever. And it was interesting because. We was talking so much, and he was cussing and everything. He was just real comfortable mm -hmm. around right. me. <laughs> he, he didn't care, and I didn't care either. Right. And then one day, uh, he asked me some. He asked me what I was, what I do, and different things. So I told him I was a minister. Mm -hmm. He said, "What? <laughs> oh my God, brother! I've been cussing in front of you this whole time." <laughs> He said, "Brother Marcus." I said, "Bro, don't you no, start right? Don't start me, that. Don't start brother that, brother Marcus." But see, that's the problem. Yeah, 
The problem is, is that people don't feel free mm. to be who they are In around the believers. Yeah. Why? Because I tell you why. Because we have painted this image that oh, I don't want you can't be around me and uh-huh. all that sin and that stuff. <laughs> like you cussing all that stuff. Uh-uh, right. I can't have that. Right. I literally had somebody tell me that this. I ain't gonna call him an idiot, but this person <laughs> <laughs> told me that somebody said that they would not go to a restaurant. Uh, they went to a restaurant and they had a waiter that was homosexual. That was like, you know, their mm. waiter. They would ask for another waiter. I'm like, bro, wow, how can how stupid can you be, right? As a Christian, really? right? Come on. Like that could be your opportunity not to just like highlight their sin, right? Or not, right. But it, it showed them the love of God, right? You don't have to highlight right. every issue and every problem, every because what are you doing, right? What are you doing? Anyway, in a, in a, that just, that I part. just had a moment. I'm but the sorry. thing is, like, we can't you, we can't be so, like you said, so heavily and so deep that we miss, you know, the people that are in front of us. Like, I think about this: there are people. We all work secular jobs, mm-hmm. all of us, mm-hmm. well, mostly everybody who are not in the, you know, working mm-hmm. in the church. You know, those who are not working in the church don't have a, a position on staff. Close your ears. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> but for the rest of us, you know, we work a secular job. Do you treat your employers or do you treat your coworkers? Do you treat all these different people the way that you treat your pastor? Mm-hmm. The way that you treat your church folk? Mm-hmm. Do you treat them the same way mm-hmm. in the morning when you see them? God bless you, right, woman of God. Right, right, right. Good morning. They're going to look at you crazy. Right, right, right. <laughs> They're going to look at you like, who is this? <laughs> right. We have to be the same way. Neutral, man. Neutral. And, all, and I'm not saying this to, to like de-emphasize holiness. I'm not. That is, is that not what I'm saying? There is a way to live your life in the image of God and be yourself. Correct. You don't have to be fake. You don't have to be deep. You don't have to be anything other than who God created you to be, period. Bro. And I think that that is what's missing in the church and in other expressions of church is that we think that we have to be so high and mighty all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is this. I'll, I'll never... Say that you don't, you can't carry Christ with you everywhere you go. That's not what I'm saying. You have to carry Christ with you everywhere you Absolutely. go. You have to have the Spirit of God in you everywhere you go. All right, but it's tact, man. Yeah, it's just tact. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be able because, like the gentleman I was talking about, we're friends to the, to this day. He listens to me, mm-hmm. and he listens. He's open to yeah. the Word of God as opposed to him not before, where I found out that he's been church. I mean, hurt by church yep. experiences. Mm-hmm. By people in the church who look down on them, so he didn't ever want to fool them. But now he looks at me and he he sees, nah, maybe I misjudged this. Yeah, we don't give people an opportunity to see Christ. Talk, oh, that's because good. we're too much in the way. That's good. We're that's too good. much in the way. That's of good, how, Reverend. <laughs> how Christ is supposed to do things, and the only way that you do it, you have to, you have to study Him. Number one, you have to study Christ. But really study Christ. Don't mm-hmm. just look at the things that he's done. Look at how he carried himself, mm-hmm. how his character was. Mm-hmm. It's important. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because people, even though <laughs> we don't talk about it, but Jesus had a, a sip or two of, of something to drink. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. He don't just turn water into wine. <laughs> and have a sip. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but you know what I mean? He was still... He was still human. Yeah. He was still a man of God. I mean, he was he was God. Yeah. He was man, all man, all God. And he did everything that we he he gave us the blueprint. Yeah. But he tells us to be ourselves all yeah. at the same time. Yeah. He gives us the blueprint, be ourselves, because who I reach is not who you reach. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. And how can people be reached? You yeah. know what I mean? If in turn everybody is the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I believe we broke past it, um, especially with our generation. I believe we broke past it, but now I believe we just have to balance it out. Yeah. Because we, our generation, we have we have grown our voice where we we don't like to be uh, a certain way. You're not going to hold us down or different things of that nature. Um, but at the same time, guys, I mean, I'm speaking to all of us, at the same time, we still have to have a level of discipline. hmm Especially if you're not a babe in Christ. Yeah. Okay. I can de- I I can understand people who are new to this and they're trying to understand. Stop acting like here we go. I may get in trouble for this one, but Say stop it. acting like you have the power of a meat eater. But when it comes to you 
your decisions, you're making decisions as a babe. Mm. You can't do that. Yeah. You have to choose which, which one you're going to do and how you're going to be and different things of that nature, bro. Yeah.